Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker is now just six to seven days away from its official release by Disney, Lucasfilm, director J.J. Abrams, and even creator George Lucas. That is all set and ready to end the Skywalker saga and the sequel trilogy itself. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future content. Now, on top of everything here, we do know that this movie, a lot of fans around the world have mixed feelings, emotions, and thoughts going into this movie based on what they have seen and heard, based on the leaks and spoilers and everything ranging from the trailers to the TV spots and all these different aspects that we have seen in the marketing of Episode 9. And on top of all this as well, we do know that The Rise of Skywalker is by far the most important Star Wars film there is, not just a Disney and Lucasfilm, but also to us, the Star Wars community, as it will determine the future of the franchise and where things will stand based on episode 9. Now, with that being said, I wanted to go over one of the massive leaks of The Rise of Skywalker and proof as to why it's actually real and how this all has to do with key characters such as Palpatine, Kylo Ren, and even Supreme Leader Snoke. Now, specifically, what's really intriguing about all of this is that it's explained that in the beginning of the film, Kylo Ren travels to the world of Exegol by using his Wayfinder device that is said to be in the shape of a pyramid or triangle, where once Kylo Ren lands on Exegol, he steps out and ignites his lightsaber as seen in the trailer. It's explained that eventually Kylo Ren enters a Sith sanctuary where he takes a lift down and begins to witness the shrines of the Sith where Kylo is said to begin to hear dark side whispers reaching out to him and guiding him to a certain location in the sanctuary. Those whispers are said to be Sith spirits reaching out to Kylo Ren which lead him to Palpatine's location. The voices of the Sith spirits are said to be random and not in the basic language but rather an ancient Sith language that the audience will not be able to understand. Kylo begins to enter a large room that appears like a mad scientist lab full of tanks where there's dozens of them, to which they are all said to be full of Snoke clones. These clone tanks or chambers are said to have red glowing LEDs on the bottom where it holds a strange greenish liquid inside each tank. Inside the tanks are full of wires and Snoke clones and tubes as well where once Kylo Ren looks inside one tank he, become, he becomes overwhelmed and even frightened realizing that many of his years of training under Snoke was based on a lie, to where he hears Palpatine's laughter in the background. Kylo carefully walks over to Palpatine's location looking for where he is, to where Sidious laughs again. Right now Kylo Ren in the dark scared, is actually scaring Ren as he ignites his saber and holds it up to Palpatine's neck, claiming to be Darth Sidious. Kylo Ren does not believe he is Darth Sidious and so Palpatine must prove himself to Ren, telling him that he has been every voice that he has heard inside of his head, as done in the latest trailer. However, the scene is said to be cut differently where Palpatine is strapped into a medical chair of some kind hooked up to a mecha machine where his arm is hooked up into an exo arm connecting to the wall. Palpatine emulates the voices of Snoke and Vader and even confirms to Ren that he was behind everything from the very start and that he is Snoke and that he was controlling a clone of Snoke and built the First Order from the ground, from the ground up remotely. So now on to the proof. You guys may have seen the official interview of The Rise of Skywalker featuring Ian McDermott as Palpatine. Check out this screenshot, all right? You can view the full interview below in the description if you guys want to go ahead and check it out. It's a very interesting interview, actually. Ian gets to talk a little bit about his return as Palpatine, how he felt as you know an actor portraying the character once again look in the background there though it's exactly as described in the background you can see the red led lights that we have been talking about for a couple of days now underneath the chambers full of that strange liquid with tubes inside of course they're not going to have the snoke clones sitting in there you know when they're shooting this interview but those are the actual cloning chambers of the Snoke creatures that Palpatine has created and used one of them as a way to trick Kylo Ren into believing that Snoke was indeed this ancient being, where in the reality, the clones of Snoke are based on the original Snoke. The original Snoke lived on the world of Exegol and was actually killed by Palpatine at one point in time during his arrival. This too will also be explained in the official novelization. So the Snoke clones are real, guys. The leak about the Snoke clones are 100% real. You can see the clone tanks there in the background, the red LEDs that we have been talking about as well, as well as that liquid that sits inside of the chambers and the wires and the tubes that you can see over 
to the right over Ian's shoulder there. So it's a very interesting thing here, the fact that, you know, Disney and Lucasfilm are kind of copying or cherry picking from the expanded universe, where in the EU there were Palpatine clones, now in the new canon by Disney there are Snoke clones. Now, as we went over in the previous leaks, Palpatine did this as a way to prep for his new Sith Empire to create an army of using these Snow clones as these powerful creatures, and he used one of them to actually build the First Order from the ground up. Now, this is also to be in the very beginning of the movie and also ties directly into the trailer that we saw that was just unveiled yesterday by Disney and Lucasfilm. I'm sure all of you saw it, where basically... Palpatine is saying, you know, uh, at last, my boy, you know, uh, I have been every voice that you have ever heard inside of your head. And we hear him emulating Snoke and Vader's voices once again. This is the point in which he has to prove to Kylo Ren that he is indeed Darth Sidious because Kylo Ren knows he's already dead and questions the Darth Sidious figure. There are snow clones, how do I know that you're not a clone of, of Darth Sidious? And that's where Darth Sidious has to unveil everything related to the voices that he has been doing the Kylo Ren. So, with that being said, it's a very interesting take uh, by Abrams, but I will admit this. It seems like patchwork, and I actually laid this out a couple of hours ago, I talked about this, that... The Snow clone idea really seems like patchwork. I mean, there's no other way to say it. It really seems like it was a quick fix of Ryan Johnson's mess in The Last Jedi by killing off Snoke way too early and splitting him into two. Obviously, Ryan Johnson knew nothing about, you know, J.J. Abrams coming up with a Snoke clone or Palpatine returning because that was all last minute. So whatever Ryan did was based on what he wanted to do, not what he knew what J.J. Abrams was going to do with Snoke. Ryan Johnson just wanted to kill off Snoke as a part of his shock value in the movie of making Kylo Ren take the role as Supreme Leader Ren, which is kind of pointless now because now we know that there's a higher power that is, of course, being Darth Sidious, Emperor Palpatine of his new Sith Empire, somebody far stronger than Kylo Ren. And that's exactly why Kylo Ren is intimidated in that scene, is because he realizes how manipulated he really was, and how he wasted years of his life believing that Snoke was his master. Meanwhile, it was really Darth Sidious all behind the curtains here, pulling the strings, the ultimate puppet, pa puppet master once again. That's exactly what happens in this movie. So, once again, that's the proof right there. In that interview, you can see the Snoke cloning chambers in the background and how it will connect to the other segment of the scene that we're talking about, where Kylo Ren discovers Palpatine in this medical chair, where he's strapped into this crane machine, where his arm is actually hooked up to this, like, exo arm type of thing that connects to the wall which is based on Kylo Ren's original design in the Force Awakens art book. You guys may recall that in the art book of the Force Awakens, Kylo Ren is actually hooked up to a dialysis machine where his arm is actually in an exo arm. You can actually look it up in the Force Awakens uh, art book, you'll see it. So you can see where J.J. Abrams got that idea from and really kind of just threw that into the Palpatine character. So I'm sure that some people out there are going to like the Snoke clone idea. Meanwhile, me on the other hand, uh, all I see it as is patchwork by J.J. Abrams. I see it as a quick fix and it kind of annoys me because you could have really just done the reverse. You could have really just brought Palpatine, Palpatine back as a clone and just forgot about Snoke, or maybe even touched on Snoke's backstory and making him Darth Plagueis, or something wild like that. They could have just done something incredible like that, in my opinion, where it would have truly connected to all of the eight Star Wars movies, and even before the Skywalker saga, because Darth Plagueis has been around before the Phantom Menace. So they could have really done something like that to that degree, but they failed. They had a missed opportunity, and... You know, that's exactly how everything rolls right now. So, like I say, I would like to hear your opinion on what you believe or what you think about the Snow Clones, I should say. And yeah, so let me know what you guys think about everything related to this moment and what's unveiled in the interview by Ian McDermott. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.